Well, I think we're just about ready to go. Um, we have uh, everyone online, it looks like, and uh, everyone's connected in to, to start this online training. So uh, without uh, further delay, I'd just like to say uh, a very big welcome to all of those people who are on this call. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, today at the Fortune Institute and together with myself, Brian Scher and Simon Reynolds, a very big welcome to all of you. So today's online training is about a very important topic for many of you, or for most of you, and that is why your Google and or your Facebook ads are not working and how to get those fixed as fast as possible. Now, uh, just a quick word, uh, word of warning. For those of you who haven't been to any of my presentations before, you will know that, uh, um, or you, you may not know, that I will cover uh, and move through this very, very quickly. So please uh, be prepared for a very quick pace and to take notes uh, for those of you who would like to uh, continue to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to reveal to you uh, something which very few people understand, but it's the number one secret that I uh, have 100% uh, conviction will uh, help you get your Google and Facebook ads to work, uh, if not 100% be better, but many hundreds or even thousands percent better because many of you are uh, not getting great results with these two um, uh, platforms and other forms of advertising as well. And, uh, you know, this, you can do all of this without spending an extra cent, which is the great news. But the sad fact about this for me is that many, 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 in fact, most of the uh, marketing experts out there just don't know what I'm about to uh, run through with you today. And if you continue down the path that you continue down, you will continue to waste your money. So what I'm going to do is jump right into it and to pretty much make sure that you're in the right place and ask you why you're here today. And I assume that you're here today if you're running Google Ads or Facebook ads that don't work or your ads are simply just costing you too much money. Um, if you're here, if you're not getting enough leads or if the leads that you are getting are way too expensive for you. And if your business suffers from low sales and you're suffering from stress, then you're probably in the right place for today's training. So I would imagine for you, that if you can uh, sit back, relax, and, and absorb everything that I'm about to go through with you in the next uh, hour or so, um, and I promise not to make it boring, and I guarantee you by the end of this, there's going to be huge value given to you. So it's worth your time to just uh, bear with me and to uh, really take notes and to absorb what I'm about to try to teach to you today because it'll be of great value to you, and I promise you that. So why does this happen? Why does it happen that so much advertising uh, and money is wasted and so many businesses get such poor results? And that's primarily because of this, that, the, that marketing, especially online marketing, in my view, has been, uh, if you like, hijacked. I, and I don't mean to be mean about it, but it's been hijacked by tech people and tech people who are running your, uh, your Facebook or your Google AdWords platforms because they, they're comfortable with the technology, but unfortunately, they don't come from very extensive and very skilled marketing backgrounds. They don't have the deep understanding of marketing that's necessary to make uh, your ads work. And there is a huge difference between what they'll promise you and what you'll get, which is depicted in this uh, photo over here, blurry as it may be. But <clears throat> you, know, you get the travel brochure with the beautiful beach, um, and what you really get is not that at all when it comes to the real experience of it. Um, and what you end up uh, with are ineffective ads or ads that are just, just shouldn't be there at all. Um, they, you know, it's just not representation of you or your business, and you're not going to get a great result for doing that. So a lot of people on this call uh, will know who the Fortune Institute is, but there will be some people who don't. So for those of you who don't know who we are, let me give you a quick run through. We're a private business advisory organization where we help uh, many, many thousands 
of small and medium-sized business owners improve their, their businesses. In fact, we have individually coached, trained, and advised over 1,400 uh, business owners, uh, and they typically stay with us between one and three year periods for that training, depending on where they're at in their process or in their cycle. Uh, we have run education programs for over 30,000 business owners, and <clears throat> the thing that makes us different to just about everybody else out there is that we offer no theory at all, only practical proven business principles that we guarantee that will work for you. In fact, we're the only um, organization that offers this sort of guarantee. And the reason we do is because we know that we can because we know this stuff works. Um, we're also not uh, people that have just read a book or become business coaches to uh, try to provide you this information. We've been around a very, very long time and we're all very successful business owners in our own right with, an, with over 30 year track, track records uh, in success in our own businesses and uh, you know, not wannabes or pretenders or people that have just uh, read a book. We're able to solve your business problems very, very fast <clears throat> and very effectively. So we're very proud of that fact and we are certainly gonna show you how this works today. Um, so who we are? Well, um, in, in individually, there's myself, Brian Scher, and obviously the co-founder, Simon Reynolds. So let me quickly take you through, for those of you who don't know who Simon is, um, Simon is uh, one of the most respected advertising experts in Australia, and he has won more advertising awards than any other person in this country. Uh, he's also the author of multiple books um, in various aspects of personal development and business growth. Some of them are depicted on the screen. Uh, not all of them are here, but they're very extensive, and I believe Simon's got a new book coming out very shortly as well this year in 2019. Uh, he's uh, the founder of multiple advertising and marketing companies that have grown to be worth many hundreds of millions of dollars. Plus, of course, Simon does individual and private mentoring and coaching. He's got a lot of um, education products uh, himself and uh, just a terrific person if you've ever uh, met Simon. Um, on the other hand, there's myself, uh, Brian Scher, and I uh, have uh, a degree in, in business and marketing and uh, from the University of New South Wales and started uh, uh, over 11 businesses from scratch with no money. And the first business I started was in 1989. Uh, today, I'm an international best-selling author with uh, six books that have been written. Uh, I'm actually working on the seventh one right now that have been published in 17 different languages and sold in over 21 countries. And here's a few of the book covers and the, the, the various books that, that I've written in the different languages from, the, from uh, all over the world. Um, I don't have all the covers here, but just some of them. Um, in fact, for some of you on, online, you may have heard of a website by the name of Pirate Bay. I'm not sure if you've heard of it or you haven't heard of it, but it's, uh, for those of you who haven't, it's one of those websites where you, they, um, they take files and they uh, file sharing uh, content. Uh, in other words, it's uh, basically uh, breaching intellectual property rights for all those people like, like me. But um, I have the dubious honor of having this particular book of mine, the What Rich People Know and Desperately Want to Keep a Secret book, as being one of the top 10 most uh, pirated books on uh, the internet through this uh, website called Pirate Bay. And in fact, uh, there it is there, number five, uh, the most of, uh, of the fifth most pirated book on the internet. Um, in, uh, of all time. So what I'd like to do is also just to let you know that Simon and I uh, co-authored this book, which we titled The Nine Laws of Attracting Profit. And everything that I'm about to teach you today or go through with you today is in this book. So if you uh, would like a copy of uh, this book, um, we will happily uh, send you a copy, a hard copy for free. And if you would like it, please just text me on this number here, 0416 uh, with the words, uh, yes, please. And well, what I'll do is I'll have somebody give you a call, grab your mailing address, and we'll ship you out a free copy of this book. Very much worth your while and uh, of great value to you for you to have 
um, in your library and of course for you to read. It'll only take you a few hours to read, but some very powerful concepts in there of ways to attract more profit for your business. Um, so that's all you have to do. There's the book and we'll ship it out to you. There's the number 0416-246-256 with the words, yes, please, and we'll get that right out to you. So uh, why are we offering this training today is simply because Simon and I got so tired of seeing people and uh, clients coming to, the, coming to us who are losing their money simply because their advertising is either bad or it's just not working at all. So what I'm going to do is show you how to fix this, um, these problems with your advertising almost immediately with <clears throat> this one very, very powerful uh, concept that, as I said earlier, very few people ever talk about or even fewer people fully understand. So um, now uh, just make sure that you stay right till the end because this is where the value is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a very cool thing to, for you to help you um, with this one thing that I'm going to teach you in the next uh, 55 minutes or so. And I'm going to tell you how to get a copy of what I call my million dollar cheat sheet that I use for only with my high paying clients. And there's some pictures of it here. And you're going to actually need this in order for you to be able to uh, uh, ex expedite the process that I'm going to teach you today. Uh, to help you um, extract the information that you need to be able to for you to practice what I'm about to teach you. So uh, if you uh, remain uh, with me right till the end, I'm going to show you how you can get these uh, cheat sheets as well. And, uh, and just one final point before we get going is that this is not a training I've ever done before on the internet. It's something that I usually reserve for my private and high paying <clears throat> clients. So um, this is the very first time that I'll be uh, revealing this to anyone um, outside of my inner working group. <clears throat> now, there is one simple thing that almost all of your advertising um, is missing, and that is, that it's, and that is this, and it's costing you a fortune. So what I'd like to do is now um, take you through this whole process. So what I'm going to say to you to right now is this, that whatever business you're in, if your advertising is not working, you are being overworked and underpaid. In other words, you're working for far, far less and many, many more hours than you should be because you're not getting a return on it. And effectively, what you're doing is you're building a business which is like the three little pigs, a house of sticks, and what, that's not what you should be doing. You should be building yourself a house of bricks and if your advertising and your funnels are not working then what you're doing is you certainly won't have a solid business on which to build the foundation of great income into the future and this is why you're being underpaid simply because you are not earning enough through low sales but why is this why is this the case because your ads are either not producing enough leads or your leads are costing you too much your, your CPLs are way too high and what's happening is it's eating away at your profits. Now, why is this the case for you? And in fact, most businesses out there, and this is where we're getting into the nuts and bolts of the, of the, of the whole process. And that is that you and potentially most marketing people that you have either working for you or that you're working with do not understand marketing at the three different levels that it needs to be fully understood. In fact, very few people even talk about this or understand this and that marketing operates at three different levels there's the first level which is at a structural level the second level which is a strategic level and the third level which is a tactical level and what happens is most marketing experts only ever understand number three and that's the tactical level and the the, the problem with that is is that if your strategy or your structure is not right then your tactics just don't work and this is the case in, in this. This is what happens in most cases, and which is why you're not getting a return on your investment, and your ads are just not paying you the, the amount of money that they should. And so, a lot of people will ask me, "What's the difference between tactical and strategic?" Well, once again, tactical is very much where 
everything is the same. You, you can have the same uh, tools as, the, as your competitor. You can have the same uh, uh, fishing rod. You can have the same hook. You can have the, the same line. You can have the same sinker, but you're not going to be catching the fish. Why? Because you're just fishing in the wrong place. And so there's no point in using tactics if your strategy is wrong. You can, you can have a far inferior tactics and you can still do far better if your strategy is, uh, is correct. In fact, you, you, you'll get no result with, with great tactics when your strategy is wrong and you'll get a much better result if your strategy is right and your tactics are poor. So it's very important for you to understand that so we can start making those strategic changes. And what I'm talking to you about today is the whole notion of strategy in, in your advertising and in your copywriting, which most people out there miss. So in the next 50 minutes, I'm going to be uh, talking about how to be strategic and help, how to help you get results to increase your, your leads and to lower the, the cost of, of your sales, which together will give you an immediate boost in your profit. So let's begin. Um, what is it, and, and this is where I need to start getting you to interact and start thinking about things. And what is it that most businesses do um, is that they tell their customers what they do. So if I was to sit and say to you, tell me what do you do, what you will do is you'll answer me in terms of your understanding of your business. You will tell me what you do. If I say to you, uh, what, what do you do? You will say, well, I'm an architect, I'm a plumber, um, I'm, a, you know, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, um, you know, I, I run a business selling hats, I sell a, sell a business, uh, I run a business selling cars, or whatever it is that you may do. And that's mostly how people ex describe what they do. <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to explain to people, right, um, why you do it, right? And it's very rare that you will tell your, your, your customers why, why you do whatever it is that you do. But it's, more, it's much more important for you not only to tell them why you do it, but also you need to tell them why you do it in your customer's frame of reference. Not just why you do it, but why you do it in their frame of reference. And a lot of people, uh, when I say this, go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, but they don't know how to do that. So if you want to stop wasting money on your adverts um, and uh, you need to start creating your why from your customer's frame of reference. So the question becomes is, how do you create your why from your customer's frame of reference? Because that's the key to making this, this whole process new and exciting for you. Well, you do this with what I call a unique selling proposition. And a unique selling proposition is not something that I invented. It was invented by a guy by the name of Rosser Reeves. And he uh, started speaking about this in the 1940s. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's a very, very deep uh, marketing concept that a lot of people would have heard of, but very few people understand or practice very well at all. But today, unfortunately, for many people, the USP is still very much a mystery. And not only is it a mystery, what's remarkable is that not one in 10,000 businesses um, have a USP, or if they do have, have it, it's not done very well at all. And in my view, this is the missing piece as to why 99% of adverts just don't work or end up costing too much money. But here's the problem. Most marketing experts, as I said earlier, just haven't heard of it or don't know how to effectively create one for you before they write your ads. Um, and if you don't believe me and you, you want to test them on it, I suggest you just call them up and ask them about your USP um, and ask them if they've built that, this into your, your adverts and your advertising co copy. And it'll be interesting to see what they have to say. So your USP is effectively the ground zero of all your marketing. It's without question, the most important part of your marketing um, uh, funnel and, and part of your marketing mix. And if you don't have this, 
it is costing you an absolute fortune. And I, how much is it worth to you? Well, I don't know. It could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of extra sales or millions of dollars extra to you, depending on the size of your business or where you're at at the moment. Um, but it's, it's most certainly worth getting it right because when you do, it's like turning the tap on for new leads and new sales. And here's the best news of all, that what does it cost you to do this? And the, the answer is obviously right here in front of you that it costs you absolutely zero. It's not like you've got to spend any more to fix the ads that you're already writing. You just got to get the right skills in place to make sure that your ads are written strategically and not tactically. And, you know, a lot of people will ask me, you know, where does this work? Or, you know, this is fine, but it, it doesn't work, you know, where I advertise. Well, I can assure you, no matter where you advertise or where you, you, you practice your marketing, whether it be Google, whether it be AdWords, whether it be, you know, online, offline, whether it be your storefronts, whether it be newspapers, radio, uh, it, it makes absolutely no difference. Wherever it is that you advertise, this absolutely works 100%. Um, it's such an important concept that, in fact, it's so important that they don't even teach it to you at business school. That's how important it is. It's remarkable. I went to business school. Many of you on this, on this call, um, on this training, would have gone to business school as well. And I'm sure very few of you learned this concept at, um, at your uh, business school or wherever you went for your education. So you have to learn it on the run or in places like this because this is the only, only place where you'll actually find the information for it. Now, um, why is it important? Because your goal in business is to do the following five things. One, increase the amount of traffic that you get either onto your website or into your store or wherever it is that you conduct your business. You also need to increase the number of leads that you capture once the traffic is passing your store or going to your website. You need to increase the number or the percentage of your conversion to sale. You need to increase the transaction value, uh, which means that you need to try to get your customers to spend more money with you. And of course, the fifth thing that you need to do is you need to get your customers to come back more often. Now, your goal in business is to do all of those things, uh, not only individually, but simultaneously. And if you do, your sales curve and your business uh, growth rate will look something like this. Uh, and simultaneous starts to happen when you start doing it roundabout right here. Um, and why is a compelling USP so critically important in the context of just of, of those five things? And that's because a great USP will increase the size and speed with which you get the first three, more traffic, more opt-ins, and a higher conversion to sale. It will not help you with number four and number five, but it's very, very effective with one, two, and three. And this is where most people struggle. And this is why it's most important for you to understand and to start applying a great USP to your business and to your advertising. But the, one of the, the, the biggest reactions that I get to the clients that I work with, and that is that the thing they love about a USP most is that it, it stops customers shopping you on price. In other words, if you have a great USP, you will not have to offer discounts anymore. And that's the best news for today. So what is a USP? To properly understand a USP, I need you to start thinking a little differently about what you're selling. So now what I'm going to do is start uh, helping you understand uh, the, the, the philosophy and the, the, the background to marketing so you can fully appreciate what a USP is and why you should be using it. Um, and here's the truth. The truth is that most business owners don't really know what they're selling. You think you might know what you're selling, but they, you, you're usually wrong and you, you're usually selling the wrong thing. So let me demonstrate this a little bit for you right now by asking you a couple of questions and, and challenging you. So the question that I have for you right now is, do customers want to buy products or services in general? In other words, do customers go out there and go, well, you know, um, I need to go and buy 
uh, a pro product X or product Y. And when I ask people this question, probably 80% or 90% of the room say, yes, they do. Customers do want to buy products or services. And um, the answer to that is, it's not a trick question, but the answer to that is, um, that um, the answer is actually no. That the, the fact remains is that what people want, want to buy is, they actually want to buy solutions to their problems. They actually do not want to buy products or services at all. Now, when you think about that, that really starts to open up a whole um, new way of thinking about your product or service. Let me give you a couple of examples here. And the key point is that products and services are nothing more than just a mechanism for solving a problem. So people actually want their problem solved. They do not want products and services. The products or services are just a mechanism to help their, them get their problem solved. So let me ask you these questions. Do customers wake up in the morning and say, hey, um, you're, you're, you own a hardware store, I wanna come and buy a hammer from you. And really the truth of the matter is they don't. Why they're buying a hammer is because they wanna hang a picture or they wanna build something. That's, that's the reason that they're buying the product because they need the product to solve the problem. Let's talk about petrol. There's very few people that I know that wake up in the morning and say, you know what? Today is a fabulous day for me to go out there and to buy petrol. The reason that they're buying petrol is because they are looking for mobility. They wanna get from here to there. They wanna get from home to work. That's the real reason why they're buying your product or your service. Let's take a computer, the very thing that you have in front of you right now. And I don't know how many of you also get the urge to go and buy a new computer for the sake of owning computer. Very few of you, I would imagine. It's because you want access to information, the very much like the information you're getting right now. The computer that you're watching this on is just a, a mechanism for you to be able to get the information that is being delivered to you at this very moment. And that's a, that's a very important distinction for you to understand because once you start to understand this, it changes the way you start to market your business. Now, if it was true that customers wanted to buy products or services, then these products that I have here on the screen would still very much be in vogue. Um, some of you may be too young, I don't know, to even know what the uh, that yellow contraption is on the left-hand side of your screen. Um, that, that's called a Walkman. For those of you who are a little bit older, uh, that was a massive product uh, made by Sony um, in the, uh, I think it was in the, in the early 80s. And everybody was walking around with these Walkman. Today, that product doesn't even exist anymore. And in fact, if you show young kids what that is, they won't even know what, it, what, what that actually is or what it does. Um, the, uh, the fax machine and, of course, the DVD player almost doesn't exist anymore anymore. Um, and of course, those things that uh, the record records and record players, uh, those are still around a little bit, but not too much. And they're certainly not in everybody's homes today. They're more a collector's item. So that's a very important thing for you to understand that products come and go based on the fact that somebody else has come along and solved the problem in a better way than a previous product. So those products will disappear. And so will you. If you don't understand that you're, you're not in the product and service business, you're in the problem solving business. And that's the business that you're really in. And your adverts that you write, whether it be on Google or Facebook or anywhere else, need to understand and build that in to the copy and into the process. And this is what I'm about to take you through today. So how do you get your customer service? How do you get your customers to want your product or service if what they really want are solutions to their problems and you can only do this by one of two things number one to create a to create a disruptive technology much like the iphone or the ipod got rid of the walkman um, and that and in, in of in and of itself is a unique selling proposition because if you've got a unique product which the ipod was very unique when it first came out um, it it, it itself is, is unique and therefore you've got a great advantage over the previous product that was there. But if you don't have 
uh, a creative or disruptive technology in your business and you are selling what your competitors are selling, then what you absolutely have to do is number two on your screen and that is to create a compelling, unique selling proposition for your current product or service. Now, before uh, I go too, too much uh, further into what a unique selling proposition is, a lot of people get confused between branding and unique selling proposition because they are not the same thing. So what is branding? Branding is getting your uh, prospects or your potential customers to prefer or trust you over your competition, much like the Coke versus Pepsi war, where you, they, through spending millions of dollars in advertising, they try to get, get you to have some sort of brand preference. So you, when you go to the freezer in the supermarket, you will pick out Coke rather than Pepsi. A unique selling proposition is completely different and it's not branding at all. A unique selling proposition is getting, the goal of it is to get your prospects to see you as the only solution to their problem. In other words, that there is no competition. And that's the distinction and the reason why you need to have a unique selling proposition because you want to be unique and you want to have no competition. Because if you, if you remain with all your, your competitors, that's where and why your business and your sales are low. And I don't know if uh, any of you recognize this chap on the screen um, uh, right here on the left-hand side. And he's a, a guy by the name of Dan Kennedy. And Dan Kennedy says that today there is just about too much of everything. In other words, supply exceeds demand almost everywhere. There is no shortage of products or services in today's world. Back in the 40s or 50s, there may have been, but there is absolutely an excess of everything today. And it's very important that every business needs to justify its own reason for being. It cannot just exist. So you can't just open up your business and hope that your business is, is just going to uh, 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 succeed just because you're there. That's not going to happen anymore. In fact, you're going to fail. So he asked the question, what's your reason for being? And what problem do you solve better than anyone else? Because it's not just about solving your customers' problems. There's plenty of other people out there that will solve your customers' problems just as well as you. What you need to ask yourself is a better question. And that is, what problem do you solve better than anyone else? And it's the better than anyone else aspect of this where we need to dig into. And your only answer to these questions is that you have to start looking um, in a strategic way how to make yourself unique or make yourself more scarce either through reality or perception because sometimes it's not possible to make yourself more scarce or unique through reality but you can do it through perception and i'm not saying deception i'm saying through perception because perception is uh, is as real to most uh, to almost everybody as reality is so we can use the perception of the fact that your product or service solves somebody's problem better than your competitors. And there are techniques and ways to actually make that work for you. So let me continue and keep taking you down the path that I wanna take you on so we can come to the, the right conclusion for you at the end of this training. A question for you. And this just demonstrates what I've just been saying. Does the world need another lawyer? And when I ask this question, a lot of people uh, look at me with a blank stare and. And the answer to this question is, no, the world doesn't need another lawyer because the universities across the world pump out, God knows, tens of thousands um, of new lawyers every year to add to the existing number of lawyers that are out there uh, already. So does the world need another lawyer? No. And if you are a lawyer, then you're just a commodity. You're just another person that's come out with the same information, the same uh, degree, the same offering as 50,000 other uh, graduates that have just graduated this year, plus the half a million other lawyers that have graduated in the last 10 years or more. But does the world need an another lawyer? No, it doesn't. But the world does need a, a lawyer who wins every case. So if you were a lawyer 
and you wanted to win more customers, would you go out there and just say, well, I'm a lawyer? No, you wouldn't. You would need to go out there and if you wanted to be a successful lawyer, you would need to go out there and say, I am a lawyer who wins every case. Now, if you were able to say that, you would be 99.999% better off than all the other lawyers because they won't or can't say that, but you could. Now, I'm not gonna go into the execution of this right now and, and whether you want to argue and say, well, how can a lawyer say something like that? At this point in time, all we're really talking about is the marketing aspects of how powerful it would be or could be if a lawyer could come out and say to you, hey, I'm a lawyer who wins every case. You would be far more likely to want to go and to use that lawyer than any other lawyer out there in, on Google or wherever else they might be advertising. So let me ask you another question. Uh, does the world need another doctor? Now, uh, if you're living in a, uh, you know, uh, a first world country, the answer is no, the world does not need another doctor. But once again, there are many doctors that are being pumped out. Now to take a look at this, um, this is an article that was, that was in the um, Australian newspaper just before the last federal election. And it's talking about a doctor glut in this article and doctors having to chase patients. And the, the fact is that there's more doctors than are, are needed. And because of this, it's undermining the amount of fees that doctors can actually charge. And this is my point exactly. Just because you have a high level of skill does not mean that you're going to be able to charge more. Or if you, if you are offering a product or service that has a high quality, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to make a profit or charge more than your competitors or get more leads than your competitors. Because it's not about your skill. It's about your ability to market yourself. And this is why you need to become much more skilled at that if you're going to be able to grow your business and be able to get more leads. So, so what does the world need another doctor? The answer is no, it doesn't. But the world does need a certain type of doctor. The world needs a doctor who can cure cancer. So if you are a doctor and you wanted to make yourself unique, you need to start looking at how you can provide a solution to people's problems that no one else is addressing at this point in time, and that is a cure for cancer. Now, there are many people who are trying to do this, and I'm not saying it's not possible, but the point is, if you were a doctor who could say, hey, I'm a doctor and I could cure cancer, at this very moment, you would have no shortage of leads, you would have no shortage of conversions, and you would have no shortage of profits. Now, the final question I wanna ask you for this particular exercise is, does the world need another pub? Let's just take something very generic like a pub. And in, in Sydney, in Australia, there are many, many hundreds, if not thousands of pubs. No shortage of a, of, a, of a spot anywhere for you to go and get a beer or any other drink that you might desire. So does the world need another pub? And then you might say, okay, well, how do you differentiate a pub? How do you make a pub quite unique or different? And sometimes you've got to add value to it and it's not just about the pub itself. But what about a pub? And this is where you can make yourself unique because if your pub is just a pub and it serves beer and serves the same spirits and the same as everybody else, whether you're offering food or pokies or whatever else everybody else is doing, how do you make yourself unique? Well, what about a pub where the Beatles are appearing? Now, I'm not suggesting you could get the Beatles to your pub, but if you could, would you not have a lineup of people around the block trying to get in to drink your beer? And I assure you that the answer to that is yes. So what I'm trying to do is impress upon you the importance of trying to look for ways to make yourself unique where you currently are not, if that's where you are at the moment. And the point that I'm also making at this very moment is that it just takes a few words. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, explaining. It just takes a few words to make all the difference and it costs nothing to do. So if you're a doctor who cures cancer or you're a lawyer, who wins every case. Those few words are gonna make a massive difference to your marketing and how you perceive by the outside world and how many people come knocking on your door. And it will make you a fortune and stop you from being overworked. But here's the sad point, that most USPs, if they even are uh, present, uh, are absent, 
uh, I should say, uh, because 99% of, of companies don't have them. They're confusing um, or they're completely wrong. And that's the shame about this thing. But the key words, the key words for unique uh, selling proposition is unique, that it, it must be that nobody else has this. And the proposition, as in there's a, there has to be a promise to your customers. What do you promise your customers that other people do not? Is the question for you to write down. Now, every successful business makes a unique promise to their customers. It's the core customer agreement. And the point that I am making to you is that your business probably does not have this if you're not as successful as you want to be. Another question that I get is, when and how do you use a unique selling proposition? And the answer to that is that it's the thing that you use to attract your customers right up front. It tells the customer why they should buy from you rather than your competitors. And this is how you put the why in your customer's frame of reference, is why they should buy from you rather than your competitors. And it's amazing how many, that how many people, how few people I should say, in business can answer this question, never mind their marketing experts, uh, who when I do ask them have a blank look on their face. So why you should buy, why, I, why should they should buy from you rather than your competitors? Can you answer that question? And if you can, then you can pretty much log off from this training right now. But if you, if you cannot, then it's probably worthwhile sticking around. What most people say when I do ask them this question is they say, well, my, our product or service or our restaurant is better quality than our competitors or our service is better. But unfortunately, folks, that is not a unique selling proposition because your competitors are most likely saying the same thing. Uh, but it is your reason for being, and that's the thing that you have to find. Your unique selling proposition is your elevator pitch. Tell me how you will solve my problem in a way that serves my self-interest that is better than anything else out there. And you should be able to answer that in an elevator in a matter of you know, 10 to 15 seconds if somebody asks you what you do. You should not answer what you do, you should tell them why they should buy from you in a very short period of time. And that's a unique selling proposition in a nutshell. So, what should your unique selling proposition, when you're trying to find one, what should it focus on? And the answer to this question, many uh, marketing experts will get wrong. And what they will tell you is that you should sell the benefits. You should be focusing on the benefits, not the features. And unfortunately, uh, they could not be more wrong because customers are not interested in benefits uh, at all. What customers are interested in is uh, how you are solving the biggest emotive problem for them. The biggest emotive problem your business, your product or your service uh, solves for your customers. That's what you should be focusing on. And why do I say it needs to be emotive? And the reason for that is because people buy with emotion and then they back it up with logic. So if you're missing emotion, if you're missing emotion in the first place, then there is nothing further for them to, to uh, go on with. And why this is so important, because if you focus on the emotion part of the problem solving, this allows you to get immediately into the conversation going on inside your prospect's head. And that's an emotive one. And that's precisely where you need to be because every one of your prospects has got a conversation going on inside their head about you, about your product, about your service, or about your industry. Whether it's a good conversation or a bad conversation is almost irrelevant, but it needs to be uh, relevant to the conversation that's going on inside their head and figuring out what that conversation is and being able to understand that so you can start to solve their problems or provide them, uh, sell them what they are looking for. Um, now, we all do this. We've all got a conversation going on inside our heads. In fact, you've got a conversation going on inside your heads right now. It could be about me. It could be about the tone of my voice. It could be about the content that I'm providing. It could be about how quickly I'm, I'm, I'm uh, progressing. It could be about how slowly or this could be boring or interesting or whatever is going on inside your head at this very moment. We all do it. We can listen, but we've got a conversation going on inside our heads at the very same time. And this is what your prospects are doing to you. 
your, your prospect's mental response when you talk about your USP or hearing your USP should be, yes, that's me. This company understands me. Thank God for that. And if you are able to get to that point and achieve that, then you will, without doubt, um, have a far, far more profitable business than you do right now. So you're probably asking yourself, that's all very good and well, Brian, and you've been going on now for 15 or 20 minutes about this, but you still haven't told me um, how you do this and how you develop your own USP. Well, I needed to do this background for you so we get to this point so you understand how important it is and why you need to do it and what it is. So how do you develop your own USP? And I'm gonna show you how you do that exactly in about three minutes. But the, just before that, let me just set it up for you. And in setting it up for you, I need to outline for you that there are three rules that you need to follow in creating your USP. And the first one is that it must be unique because if you just copy some, what somebody else is doing, then it's not unique at all. And it only has to be slightly unique and that's enough. And it, 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 it doesn't even have to be real. It can just be a perception, as I spoke about earlier. And over here, you see a picture of some athletes running. And the difference sometimes between an athlete who wins and an athlete who comes second in any endeavor can be a few uh, millimeters, a few one, one hundredths of, of a second, or whatever measurement, or one point, or whatever it is, that makes a difference between winning and losing. And the winner ends up getting their picture on the uh, wheelie box, and ends up making all the money and the person who comes second nobody can even remember almost a week later and that's why it's important for you to actually uh, win and to make sure that you are the most memorable uh, of, of all your competitors in this way the second rule is that you need to articulate clearly how indeed you are unique it's not enough just for you to uh, have that as a best kept secret because a lot of businesses that i've looked at and that we've consulted to actually have a good USP, but it's on page three or page seven of their, web, of their website. And they've kept it a very well hidden secret. And in fact, they don't even put it out there in front of their customers and it's not working for them. And rule number three is that you need to be able to demonstrate your uniqueness. It's not enough just to tell people. Uh, that, that was the case before. There are three different levels of influence. And the first level of influence is that you, it's you telling your customers what you can do. And that's one form of demonstration, but it's not, it's not effective anymore and it's not as strong as it needs to be. The second level of influence is others telling customers what you can do. And those are called testimonials and those have all been used and they're still very powerful, but are becoming less so because everybody's got testimonials these days. So what we need to be able to progress to with our unique selling proposition is to be able to demonstrate that, you, uh, that what you say you can do. And that's, what, that's what's important here, is that your unique selling proposition needs to incorporate this rule number three for you to be able to demonstrate your uniqueness uh, and, and what you say you can do, you need to be able to demonstrate that to your potential customers. Now, the thing that happens in creating a unique selling proposition is that most people make these following mistakes. And I'm pointing them out to you because I, I want you to avoid making these mistakes when you're creating your unique selling proposition. And the first mistake is that your unique selling proposition is not your brand. We covered that earlier. The difference between a brand and a unique selling proposition, it is not your brand, it is not your mission, it is not your vision, and it is not a strap line. A strap line is just not even close to what a unique selling proposition is at all. That's a mistake number one. Mistake number two that people make is that they try to have a unique selling proposition for everything across the whole company, one unique selling proposition. But a unique selling proposition is usually product or market specific, which means that if you have one product with that, that is uh, uh, targeting multiple markets, then you will need to have multiple USPs, most likely. Or on the other hand, if you have one market with three different products, you will need to have three or four or five, depending on how many products you have, multiple USPs. And this is why it becomes so difficult. People do not understand and, and have a great difficulty in being able to come up with a unique selling proposition for themselves.
or their business. Mistake number three, uh, as I said this earlier, a lot of people will say we have better service or better quality. That is not a unique selling proposition and virtually nobody gets this right. Mistake number four, specificity. Specificity is critical. The more specific you are in your articulation of your unique selling proposition, the better it's going to be, the more powerful, the more effective it's going to be. And clever, witty general statements just do not work. So for example, I saw this particular statement on the back of a truck uh, carrying those porta potties. Our business is your business. Well, I took note of that because I thought to myself, well, that's very clever and uh, very witty, but it's not going to influence me one iota to call this company because our business is your business. It means absolutely nothing. There is nothing in that that, that, that works. You could have that as a strap line if you wanted, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a complete waste of time, as is most marketing that we see out there because it's just not well thought through. Mistake number five, your unique selling proposition should be built into your headline for your uh, adverts, for your websites, for any banners, uh, for any form of advertising that you're doing, wherever it may be, and it should also be your first line of your sales pitch. It's really important not to keep it hidden, as I said earlier. And if you're going to come up with a unique selling proposition, it needs to be right up front and center to your whole sales process. Mistake number six, don't just claim it, demonstrate it. So I spoke about demonstration earlier, but this is what it means and this is how it works. If you make a claim, we will do ABC, then the demonstration is, or it's free. That demonstrates the power of, of what your claim is. Here's another one. If it doesn't do XXX, whatever your product or service does, doesn't do or, or does do, we will pay for XYZ. It's so good, try it and see for yourself. So it's the demonstration, it's the try it and see for yourself that's, that brings the power of a unique selling proposition, not just the claim. And a lot of people make that mistake. Mistake number seven. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you know, uh, I, ca I can't possibly write a USP. And in some, in some instances, a unique selling proposition is very difficult to write or very difficult to articulate, but it doesn't have to be articulated in a written statement. It could be the way that you simply do things. You could do things differently to your competitors, which stand out and make you unique, even if you're actually not. And most businesses assume that their customers know what they're doing, and this is a big mistake because that's the what, not the why, as we start this, pre this presentation by saying. And the final mistake that most people make is that if you don't give your customers a unique reason why they should buy from you, they will assume, correctly so, that you are the same as everybody else and they will squeeze your, your prices and your margins. And this is why you get squeezed for discounts, which you should not have to give. So there are four areas to look at for your uniqueness. Uh, it's either in your product it's, uh, or in your marketing terms, the place or your distribution, how you distribute your products, or it's in the way that you advertise or your, the way you promote, or it's in your price. And if you uh, are not different in any one of the first three, the product, the place, or your promotion, your customers will force you to be different on price and force you to discount. So my suggestion to you is that you start looking at your product and if your product doesn't have an obvious place where you can create a unique selling proposition, then you need to go and start looking at potentially just your distribution or in your, uh, how you promote your products and we, we can definitely find a unique selling proposition in one of these areas. So we're at that point. How do you create your own USP? Well, my million dollar uh, cheat sheet that I will show you how to get at the end of this presentation uh, shows you exactly how to do this for yourself and it will take you less than 60 minutes to do on your own. Just take these sheets, go out there, follow the instructions and it'll help you gather the information that you need to be able to uh, get the emotive problem solved that your customers, um, or at least understand what the emotive problem that your customers need solved. Uh, from, from their perspective. So I'm, I'm now going to show you how I do it 
and going to show you exactly how you create your own unique selling proposition. And as I said, I've never done this publicly before. So to me, this is something which I'm revealing a secret which I've had for effectively the last 25 years. Um, and you, you will now be able to do this on your own. So let's break it down into how you do this. Here's what you need to do. You need to ask your customer, you go out and ask your customers, what are the fears, frustrations, desires, or concern, concerns of your customers? What are your, the fears, frustrations, desires, or concerns of your customers about you, your product, or your industry? And if you ask those particular questions, you will be amazed at what you will hear and what you will find. Because by asking these questions, what you are doing is you're uncovering the, the major emotional buying triggers that your customers have. You're getting into the conversation inside of their heads. And this is where you need to be. And these four questions are gonna help you uncover that. So let me give you a quick example of how this works, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and how this can work for you as well. You might want to write this down. So hopefully you've got a pen and paper in front of you, but I'm going to ask you the following questions and I'm going to give you just a minute to think about it. What are your fears, frustrations, desires, or concerns when you call a plumber or you need to call a plumber? So why don't we go ahead and I'm just going to uh, go silent for just a minute and allow you to quickly write down your answers because I don't think it's going to take you very long. It should take you less than one minute to do that. So why don't you go ahead and write down those answers now in no particular order, whatever comes to your mind, just write them down and I will come back to them in just a minute. So take a minute to think about that and off you go. All right, so welcome back. It, it shouldn't have taken you that long at all to do, and I am sure that you've um, you've written down uh, you know hundreds of people on on this training. Some of you are going to have the same answers, and I'm sure there's many of you are going to have many of them in common. So from the previous exercises and the previous trainings that that I've done over the years, and I've done this particular training, uh, if not uh, uh, hundreds of times. Um, many more than that, um, we've come up with the following answers. And, and I'm sure these are in common with you. That plumbers don't arrive on time or something along those lines. That they charge too much, they cost too much. Or they leave a mess or they're rude. And I'm sure you've probably, you might have two or three others or four others that you've come up with as well. But these, are the, these four are the answers that come up most often. And don't arrive on time, charge too much, leave a mess and are rude. So if you are a plumber and you're trying to do this exercise uh, for yourself and you come up with these particular answers, what would you do with them now? <clears throat> now that you have these answers, how would you take this and turn this into an exciting proposition? And this is how you do it. Um, you create this for yourself. Well, um, if you're a plumber and you are concerned about, uh, you understand that your uh, customers are concerned that you or you or people in the industry don't arrive on time, then here's a particular unique selling proposition that might help you. We guarantee to arrive on time or your service call is free. So that's a great USP to appeal to people who are concerned about plumbers not arriving on time. <clears throat> here's another one. Um, fixed price plumbing. If it takes longer than we say it will, we pay the extra, not you. Now that particular this particular unique selling proposition that I've just written here applies for, for people who are concerned about uh, uh, plumbers who charge too much. Here's another one for people who are concerned about plumbers who charge too much because you can say this thing in various ways with more specificity. And this one has much more specificity than the previous one. Block drains cleared for just $99 and not one cent more. That's another great unique selling proposition because it's very specific to block drains and it's very specific to what the price is. So people who are concerned about you charging too much are going to appreciate this, especially if they've got a block drain 
um, this will be far more appealing for them than the previous one above it. And for those people who are concerned about uh, uh, you know, plumbers leaving a mess, uh, here's a unique selling proposition that I would write for them. Your house is left spotless or we pay a professional cleaner. Now, the question that I have for you is, if you were a plumber, which one of these unique selling propositions would you use in your advertising? And the answer to that question is quite obvious, and that is you could use all of these for your different market segments. Because I said earlier that if you've got different products or different market segments, you are going to need multiple USPs. Well, you've got one product, which is your plumbing services, but you've got multiple market segments because you have people who are concerned about different aspects of, uh, the, of the plumbing industry. And it's demonstrated here from points one to four. So you could use all of these. And if you took these headlines and you use these in your adverts, on your websites, in your Google ads, in your Facebook ads, you will without doubt get double, triple, 10 times the, the, the response that you're currently getting uh, if you were a plumber who just might say emergency plumbing or plumbing services or something along those lines, which most plumbers use because uh, they just do not understand this whatsoever because they're not trained in marketing and the people that they're using are probably are trained in marketing but don't get this as well. So here's a couple of other famous examples for you. Um, let's have a look here. Just jumped ahead of myself, so I'm just going to jump back. <clears throat> right, here we go. Some famous examples. Federal Express. Federal Express, their unique selling proposition when they started out was, we own our own planes. Now, Federal Express, if they stayed with that unique selling proposition, you would never, you would never know the, the name Federal Express because that company would have gone broke. And in fact, they nearly did. So they changed the unique selling proposition to absolutely positively overnight guaranteed. And that's when their business took off. And that's why you know the brand name Federal Express. So it's very important that you understand that. Another famous example is Domino's Pizzas. When they started out, their unique selling proposition was they're in 30 minutes hot or it's free. Why? Because uh, uh, home delivery pizzas were uh, a, a relatively new thing and there was no science behind it and people were getting their, their, um, their pizzas delivered uh, uh, cold and that's not what they wanted. So Domino's uh, guarantee to get you your, your pizzas delivered free. Other famous examples in Australia, there's Aussie Home Loans. Uh, John Simons, when he first started out, he realized that he's, he was targeting the uh, home loan market and uh, he understood what their frustrations were, that most people out there, there was no real competition. All the banks were colluding with each other and the banks were charging too much. So he came out and he said, we'll save you because he understood what he was selling and he was not selling home loans. He was saving people money. And so he came out there and said, we'll save you. And that made him a billionaire because he understood the deep frustration that people had when they were looking for home loans. Today, Aussie's home loan is still, we'll save you, but, but by helping you find the best loan. Um, here's another example. And this is, how, this is a, an advert that I wrote uh, many, many years ago when I was first starting out as a marketing consultant. Um, and I wanted to, to attract people who wanted to grow their business. And I understood that their frustration was, I want to grow my business, but I don't know how. So I wrote this ad, just want to turn your small business into a large one with a bit of copy there. And I put that in the financial review and I got a huge number of calls, which basically launched my career into marketing and into my business life. Here's another example of an ad that I wrote, which is, uh, was targeting uh, people who want to work less and earn more and earn some money part time. And this was a product that was uh, helping uh, people educate themselves on trading foreign exchange, which they could do part time or whenever they weren't at work. And so I understood that their frustration was that there's got to be a better way to make a living than selling time and they were looking for extra income. So based on that frustration, I wrote this, this headline over here and all this copy and the lead magnet that you see over here in this advert was very, very successful. In fact, this company 10 years later is still using this very same approach that uh, I created for them uh, almost 10 years ago. Um, here's another example uh, of a business that I, I started, which was called Vision uh, Business Book Summaries. And I uh, started to target people who wanted to read more, 
but don't have time, which is as big a problem today as it was back then. And I fully understood the frustration was that um, people don't have time to read books that they know they should read. That was their frustration and their fear was that they felt that they were missing out and they will be left behind. So the headline was, uh, now you can read a business book in just 15 minutes. And that became the unique selling proposition and uh, was able to tell people why they should buy these as opposed to books or as opposed to anything else. And that business became very successful in its own right. Um, his, this is an example of, of a client of ours at the Fortune Institute uh, who came to us uh, with his business and his business is called Steam Master. And um, there, as you can see, is his strap line or, he, or what he felt was his um, unique selling proposition, which was cleaner, better, smarter. And when you look at this website, uh, what does he do? He basically sells the equipment uh, that carpet cleaners need to go out there and to clean carpets, be, the, be either domestic or commercial cleaning. So that's what his business is and that's what, that's what he was doing back then. And this is what his website looked like. Um, the, the problem with this is that he had plenty of competition and you, this equipment you could pretty much get anywhere um, uh, on the internet and it was a, uh, volume was a problem and of course discounting and pricing was, was a very big problem for him. So um, I, I uh, asked him the question, um, what do people who are buying carpet cleaning equipment want? Uh, what do they really want? Uh, and, you know, he kind of looked at me blankly, blankly saying, look, I, I'm not exactly sure what they want. So once you start to ask yourself better questions rather than either, you know, what do they want? Uh, right. And the, 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 quick, the clue for, for you, all of you listening on this training is that it's not what most people think it is. Right. It's not what most carpet cleaning companies, carpet companies um, sell. That's what they really want. Right. So you've got to ask yourself. What does this guy, what is he really selling? And what these people really want, the customers of his, what they really want is they want a successful carpet cleaning business. They don't want to buy equipment. That's not what he's selling. That's, what he, that's, what, that's the products and services. But what problem do they have? They have a problem where if they're going to buy this equipment, they want customers themselves. So what we advise them to do, and this is why strategy is so important, is for him to start to focus on how he can better help his customers succeed in their own business rather than focus on selling them equipment. And so we came up with this unique selling proposition for him and, and we created this thing called Steam Master University. Steam Master University. And this was the unique selling proposition that I created for him. That he became the only carpet cleaning, the only clean, sorry, the only cleaning equipment supplier that guarantees to help you succeed in your cleaning business. So suddenly he wasn't just selling equipment. Suddenly he was, he was helping his customers become more successful. And this business, th this unique selling proposition took his business from um, uh, about, and, and I, I, in fact, I'm, I'm gonna retract that. I'm, I'm not going to share his figures because it's unfair to him. This is on an open format. But what I can tell you, it grew his business by eight times. Eight times in terms of size, in terms of profit, and in terms of, of course, turnover. And while everybody else and all these competitors are selling equipment, we are selling success. Now, I'm going to play you this video, which, which he created himself with the help of one of our copywriters to help him articulate exactly what it is that he's selling. <laughs> My name is Tam Lay. I'm the founder of Steam Master, Australia's only cleaning equipment supplier that guarantees to help you succeed. Today, Steam Master is one of the industry's most respected brands because we sell great equipment at the best possible prices. We are also the creators of Australia's first carpet cleaning university, and we have helped thousands of people to grow their businesses faster than they ever dreamed possible. But back in 1995, Things were very different. At the time, I had just finished university. I had worked as a cleaner to support myself as a student. And I had this thing in my head, that business is a great opportunity. So I decided to pursue it as a full-time career. Steam Master was born. The problem was, I didn't know a lot about business. As far as I know, 
There was no coaching for cleaning professionals in Australia at the time. I had no idea how to sell, how to market my services, or even how to find a managed staff. I constantly made mistakes. Sometimes I struggled to pay the bills, and I lost a lot of sleep, worrying about the future. Eventually, after years of trial and error, I developed a simple system. This system was unlike anything else available, and it finally helped me to achieve the success I wanted. Once I reached my goals, I wanted to make this system available to all carpet cleaners and pressure cleaners so they wouldn't have to struggle like I did. That's when I created Steam Master University. Since that time, Steam Master University has become the leading online learning platform for carpet cleaners and pressure cleaners, giving them a head start in their business. We showcase the industry leading experts and marketing professionals. We bring you everything you need to succeed. So if you have a dream of starting or growing a cleaning business, we would love to help you turn that dream into reality. This is what we do every day. To find out more about State Master University, click on the link below. All right, so that, that's pretty powerful right there. And, and uh, hopefully you can, uh, uh, you know, you can start to apply these principles to your own business as you start to understand them a little bit better. I'll take you through a few more examples because we are running out of time. I've got so much more content to, to share with you, but I'm gonna run you through these as quickly as possible. So just to show you that this applies to just about any business uh, uh, in every particular industry size, no matter what. So let me ask you this question. What do people fear when buying coffee, right? Here's McDonald's, big company. McDonald's coffee, love your coffee or we'll replace it with a perfect cup. Right, so that's the, the unique selling proposition for their coffee, not for their hamburgers, not for their fries, for their coffee. Very product specific, and that's what McDonald's do. What do people desire when buying laundry soap? Another example is a big company, Omo. Right, um, Omo tackles 99 stains. Right, T tackles 99 tough stains, and that's right there on the top of all their packaging. So that's a great unique selling proposition because I don't know about you, but I didn't even realize there were as many as 99 stains. So when I see something like that, I think, well, this must be a really good product because it is uniquely tackling all 99 stains, not just 45 that potentially the others uh, uh, that, uh, attack. Another example of a big company, what do people uh, fear when buying a burger? Well, here's Hungry Jacks. And what did they say for many years? The burgers are better at Hungry Jacks. Well, what they really mean is that what they're trying to say is that the burgers are better than McDonald's. So it's important, that, but they can't say that, but it's important for them to at least say something. They, they used that for many years, but since then they've gone on and they've, they've given a reason why. This is the demonstration that because there's no added hormones, that's why. And here they say it right here. So that's why the burgers are better. Um, and obviously trying to co copy McDonald's a little bit by saying, I love it. So that's why the burgers are better at Hungry Jacks because they contain no hormones. The point being that in Australia, and this is why perception, we spoke about perception and reality, in Australia, it's illegal to have any beef with hormones in it. So McDonald's burgers have no hormones in them uh, or added hormones either. Uh, so there you go. Um, what do people desire when buying batteries? So when people buy batteries, they want them to last longer. So here's a big company called Energizer. And they say it right there on the front of the pack, the world's longest lasting batteries, right? And over here on the right hand side, up to nine times longer, not nine, up to nine times longer. So it's very specific, right? And holds the power for up to 20 years. So that's why this company is, is, a, is a major force because it has a unique selling proposition. The question is, do you? Again, Domino's Pizza, their, their unique selling proposition used to be they're in 30 minutes hot or it's free. We covered that earlier, but it's no longer a USB because everybody's copying it. So what do you do when your competitors start to copy your unique selling proposition? You have to create a new one. And they came up with this thing called the pizza mogul. Create a pizza, get a slice of the profit. They involving customers with that as well on social media. So what do people fear when going to a, a hotel? Here's a company in America, and this is the difference between a strap, a strap line. It demonstrates the difference between a strap line and a USP. This is a company called the Hampton Inn. <clears throat> and their strap line is, we love having you here. 
Now, that strap line to me is a complete waste of time. They may as well not even have it because nobody, nobody believes that anyway. But what I do believe is the USP, which is here. And it's the 100% Hampton guarantee. Friendly service, clean rooms, comfortable surroundings every time. If you're not satisfied, we don't expect you to pay. That's our commitment and your guarantee. That's 100% Hampton. Excellent. That is really good stuff right there. What do people fear when they advertise? So this is your problem as well. So when you advertise, you, you fear that you're going to lose your money. Well, here's the trading post has come out with a sell it in four weeks or your money back guarantee, which they call the good is gone guarantee. That is fantastic. Why? Because they're taking the risk away and they understand what your biggest frustration or your fear is that you're going to spend money on advertising and you're not going to get your money's worth. Wouldn't it be amazing if Facebook and Google did that, but they don't. That's because they're not writing your ads. Um, what do people fear when buying toilet paper? This is a fun example. So um, here's Quilton. They come out and say, well, um, Quilton loves your bum. Well, you know, what they're trying to say is they're trying to be different by saying we love your bum, but I don't believe that they're quite there. If they were to ask me, which, which they haven't, if they were to ask me, which they haven't, but uh, if they were, I'd be ha I'm happy to write them a unique southern proposition. And my proposition would be something along the lines of this, bearing in mind what's the conversation that's going on in everybody's head, and that is, this is this Quilton will give you the smoothest wipe you've ever had, or your money back. Return of product not necessary. So you know that's kind of fun, but I think you know that would probably be a little bit more powerful than we love your your bum. So. Another fun example, what are men who are bored in their marriages and women, uh, but only use men because this, this example is, uh, is geared towards men. What are men who are bored in their marriages looking for? And when I ask people in my rooms uh, this question, they come up with various uh, answers a little awkwardly, but here's what they're looking for. They're looking for someone else. And um, this company over here, uh, this company called Ashley Madison understands this. And their advert on TV, late night television, and they say this, looking for someone other than your wife, Ashley Madison, life is short, have an affair. So while that may, a lot of people may not like this, or they may think that this is a bit cringy, it's very effective advertising, um, I can assure you of that. And this is brilliant. Um, uh, here's another fun example. What, what are people worried about when joining um, online dating. Now, online dating is huge. It's a huge market today. And uh, there are lots of companies out there offering, there are lots of companies out, out, there, out there offering um, online dating services. But what is the number one fear that people have in joining these online dating services? And the answer is that when you join it, that this, this particular website might be full of ugly losers because People who are, you know, cool, hot, and, and beautiful don't need to be on, uh, on uh, online dating. Well, here's an organization, here's a company that started something very unique, and, and they, they branded their business around this, and it's called beautifulpeople.com, online dating for beautiful people only. Now, this is very powerful because it's getting inside the conversation that people who are, who are considering joining online dating will have in their heads because everybody who's on online dating wants to meet somebody prettier than themselves um, or better than themselves or whatever they perceive to be themselves. So this, this organization guarantees that you will meet attractive people. And I'm not going to necessarily uh, have the time to go and explain to you how it's done, but it's very clever and it's very well done. So congratulations to them. Uh, what do people fear when buying food? Well, Bullworths, the fresh food people, is that believable? Not so much. But they came up with fresh or, or free guarantee. Guaranteed fresh food every time. Now we'll refund and replace. And this is, the, this is the good bit over here, the refund and replace. That's the demonstration of the guarantee right there. And that's what's important. Um, another example, if, you, if you're considering employing a builder, um, what would you want your builder to to uh, to be or or why would you pick why would you pick one builder over another builder, and in most of your heads, if you were going to be employing or looking to build a, a builder, you would be concerned about like the like the plumber that they finish on time and that they finish on budget. And here's a, a, an organisation. I took this picture out of the window of my car because I saw it and I thought this was excellent. On time, on budget, guarantee. And this company over here uh, is called Empire. 
which, is, which obviously they, they're doing very well. Um, again, I can keep going on and on and on. You know, uh, uh, there's so many great examples of this. What do you want when you have a cold? Well, everybody knows that there's no cure for a cold, but this company here called EasyCol has come out with three uh, statements which are very, uh, are very clever and go to the heart of what people want. Um, that it helps shorten your cold, that helps reduce the severity of the symptoms and reduces the impact of a cold. And it's clinically trialed to help shorten a cold because that's what people want. I've got a cold, how do I get rid of it as quickly as possible? So well done to them. Um, it, this is a, a picture of, uh, of uh, a shelf in some supermarkets that are selling apple juice or all sorts of juices. And I saw this, what's called the swing tag, hanging off this particular apple juice. And what it says is, if this isn't the best apple juice you've ever tasted, I'll give you your money back. And it's signed by the owner of the company. So if you walk in along and you're considering buying some apple juice, you're definitely going to pick this one over the one next door. Why? Because it is taking the risk away from, from you. And great marketers understand that is a big issue when it comes to uh, um, a making a purchase decision. I'm going to skip through a few examples because there are, there are way too many for me to cover for, for right now. But here's, here's a, a discounting unique selling proposition by Jetstar. So Jetstar are not shy about knowing exactly who they are. If you want to buy a cheap ticket, then on the side of the airplane, it's right there, all day, every day, low prices. So they understand who their target market is and, they, and they, that's who they go after. And the unique selling proposition is very good, and that's why they are they're successful at what they do. Um, here's an expensive pricing USP. In other words, you, you can go the opposite to do a cheap pricing USP. In other words, it's not only about discounting. You can go the other way. You can offer an expensive, uh, you can lift your prices and offer something that's really expensive to give you a uniqueness. So I took this picture of uh, something that I saw at the uh, airport, and here it is over here. It's $4,999. So I thought to myself, I wonder what that is. And there's a clue behind it because there's a couple of glasses over there. And what, what's selling for $4,999 is this bottle of whiskey. So you wouldn't believe that uh, this is probably, this is not the most expensive whiskey. You can get whiskey for far more expensive than this. But I just took a picture of it because I wanted to show you that sometimes an expensive price, if you can raise your price, that is a way for you to be different to your competitors to articulate or demonstrate the fact that your, your particular product or service is better quality. So you, you can say, you, you can't say that you're better quality, but if your price is more expensive, that in itself will actually give the idea that your product or service is better quality. Uh, here's another one example of this. Uh, here's something that's selling for $250. And uh, you know, it's very hard for you to see what this is, but what this is, what's, what's for sale over here is it looks like a, a glass of wine or a bottle of wine or something, but in fact, it's a balsamic vinegar. So here, this organization is selling a bottle of balsamic vinegar for $250. So a great strategy because what it's doing is, is telling you that this balsamic vinegar must be really good. Um, Here's a USP that just, you can see there's no lineup of people outside of this store because there's no point in just saying something like this without demonstrating it. The best fish and chips in the universe. Now, is that believable? Absolutely not because the universe is a big place and just saying that this is the best fish and chips is, well, anyone can say that because there's no demonstration. But if they were to say, if this is, isn't the best fish and chips you've ever tasted, we'll give it to you for free. Well, that, that's slightly different and that's potentially going to work. Um, here's a bar that's in the United States and I happened to see this picture uh, on a friend of mine's Facebook page and I was just uh, looking at it and I thought, well, I wonder what it says over here that's making this bar very different. And I couldn't quite read it, so I thought I'd blow this up. What, what's the, what's this, this uh, unique sign proposition that it's, it's got below this rockabilly uh, bar sign? And what it actually says is uh, naked bartenders that... The naked bartenders flirt with you. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I wondered where they really do have naked bartenders that flirt with you. And, uh, you know, is there, I wonder why there's not a lineup down the street, but it's very clever. So the answer to this question is because when you blow it up, it says this, the naked truth about our bartenders is that they only flirt with you for more tips. 
And when I, I saw that, I thought that's very, uh, that's very cute and very interesting, but there's no line up down the door, or, or, sorry, line up uh, out the door and around, around the block. Uh, here's another example. Uh, if you type dentist into Google, and this is what we're talking about, Google and Facebook. So I've been giving you all these examples, so let's get down to the Google and Facebook uh, uh, part of it, but more specifically the Google, Google, the, you know, Google advertising. And if you type in dentist, this is what kind of comes up. Comes up. Um, and when you look at these ads, there's nothing really compelling about any of these ads. They're just more of the same as everybody else, and you're kind of going to click on one because it happens to be the first or the second one. Uh, and that's the only reason why you're clicking on it. But there's nothing in any of this copy that is interesting, compelling, and in fact, it's costing you money to, to allow these people to continue advertising for you. The only one that has any slight unique selling proposition is this one up the top here on the right-hand side called Pain-Free Dentistry. Um, and that's got some uniqueness because when you uh, get into the conversation inside people's heads, uh, about pain-free, about dentistry, a lot of people uh, fear pain. So this one actually might have some sort of unique selling proposition, but all the rest of this is a complete waste of time. And if they are started to do some strategic work, these whoever the dentists are here could get so many more leads and steal it from their competitors. Um, I typed in Dentist Sydney, same thing over here. Absolutely nothing here that's, uh, that's compelling whatsoever other than saying award-winning dentist. So there's, there is nothing that makes any of these people stand out. Um, maybe over here, you know, book online in under two minutes. So, you know, if, if you're in a hurry to book a, a dentist, but I don't think that's the, the compelling reason why somebody would want to book, would want to choose this dentist over somebody else because you can make a quick booking. People have other fears of frustrations than being able to book in two minutes. So I think that they've missed this one completely, but, you know, at least they're trying to be a little bit different over here. Uh, seconds world, tiny ding, huge savings. Great, really uh, good uh, USB because it tells you exactly why you should buy from them. Um, and I could go on and, and on and on and you know and on with example after example that we've got here. Uh, so many different examples of different USBs and why people use them. Here's a client of ours that uh, up in Queensland called Beefies. Uh, he's selling uh, meat pies, and we said to him. You know, why would somebody come and buy your, your, your meat pies as opposed to anybody else? And he said, well, our, our meat pies are bigger, better and beefier than all the others. And I said, okay, well, why are you not advertising that? And he said, I don't know. So we put this across the top of his stores over there, over there just as you can see. We wrote it for him, bigger, better, beefier meat pies, guaranteed or it's free. And guess what? Sales jumped uh, to a large degree as well, which, uh, you know, he's allowed him to continue to grow. And if you speak to him, he will tell you how effective that is himself. So, uh, you know, many more. This one's a unique sound proposition, but it's a terrible one. And I use this one because here's David Jones, electricians, you're in safe hands. Well, that's a complete waste of time because people in Australia know that electricians have to be uh, licensed and it's just an assumption that your, your electrician is well qualified. This is just a complete waste of time right here. Um, here's something which is kind of cute. Uh, hair colouring so natural, you won't have to pull your pants down to prove it's yours. So, you know, that could be effective. It is a little bit clever and a little bit witty, but it may get somebody's attention. But there's no guarantee or there's no demonstration of that other than perhaps pulling down your pants. I don't know, but it's kind of funny. Um, Dyson, another huge company. They've got two different unique sun propositions. One for their uh, for their uh, vacuum cleaner, which uh, the product they, they, they've got them on the map. No loss of suction, no awkward moves, because they, again, once again, they realized that's what people were concerned about. And now, obviously, with their newer product, which is the Dyson Blade Dryer, the fastest, most hygienic hand dryer. Um, and uh, there it is right there. Um, here's, here's an example of a unique selling proposition, of course, where um, it's, it's basically, uh, it's not exactly hygienic, and this wouldn't work in Australia because you wouldn't be allowed to uh, put something like that in your meat pack, but this is obviously in Africa where these sort of things are allowed. And uh, you know what's unique about this is how they've packaged their products, to, uh, offering added value. So if you were walking through the supermarket and you were going to have a barbecue and you were a guy uh, and you were going to get a beer thrown in with your steak, um, I think there's a fair chance you'd be buying a few of these steaks rather than the ones sitting right next to it. So I really like that because it's the demonstration of how you do things and how you, you, you promote your products. So, so many great um, ideas. Uh, there's a company in America 
called the Heart Attack Grill, and they, their unique selling proposition is if you, if you weigh over 350 pounds, uh, you get to eat for free at their stores, as opposed to uh, this one in Australia, the best burgers in Australia or the world, which again, I think is a complete waste of time. So simple, I won't, simple. I won't keep going with all of this because there is so many, so many examples of this. And, uh, you know, we can spend hours and hours. And I know that we, we are running out of time because I've gone way over time. So what I'm going to do is just quickly summarize for you so we can start to uh, allow you to move forward with this in your business. Because I think by now you should be convinced that a unique selling proposition is the ground zero for all your marketing and without question, the most important part of your marketing. Because if that is missing, then all your marketing is effectively just in a vacuum. Um, how much is this worth to you? Well, as I said to you earlier, if you don't have one, it's costing you a fortune. If you do have one, you're going to be earning hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars more. Uh, and I can almost assure you of that, certainly. And what does it cost you? Well, it costs you zero to do. All you have to do is start understanding the stuff and start applying it to your ads, whether it be on Google or Facebook or wherever else you are advertising and you will get the results. Um, I will guarantee it for you. Um, USBs are essential to making your advertising work, yet your uh, marketing and advertising experts uh, that you're currently using is unlikely to be able to do this for you. So um, uh, if you'd like me to help you with this, uh, and the potentially the other 47 things that, that Simon and I apply to businesses to help them grow, uh, you know, you feel free to, um, you feel free to uh, just email me at coach at the Fortune Institute, or once again, you can just text me on 0416-246-256 and just put the words in there, uh, more sales, and we'll be happy to get back in touch with you and help you. Um, and I will uh, absolutely write your USP for you and help you with this so that that can set you on a new trajectory for your business and, uh, and help you get more leads, more sales without wasting your money on advertising, which you, which you most likely are doing right now. Um, I did promise you finally uh, at the start of this that if you stuck around to the end, um, I would show you how to get a copy of my million dollar USB cheat sheets. Uh, which we can uh, we can send out to you. So if you'd like copies of that, it's pretty easy for you. All you have to do is once again, text me on 0416-246-256 with your email address and just write the words in the million dollar USB cheat sheet and we can, uh, we can send that uh, out to you. So um, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this. I, I know it's been pretty heavy and I know I've gone pretty quickly, but I, I did uh, warn you that I was going to do that. And hopefully you've grasped some of these concepts that I've been talking about right here. And I hope that you've enjoyed this, uh, this training and this presentation and sincerely hope that you take this and start uh, putting it into your, your business because there is no question that this is going to help you and uh, uh, without question be uh, be in a position where you can start to um, make millions of dollars more uh, in, in your business uh, starting tomorrow. If you start to apply this, not just put this, uh, this training aside and do nothing about it, because I know it might be a little complicated for you. It might be difficult for you to do, but please ask us for help if you want, if you want to do this or get those cheat sheets and start to do it yourself. So with that, um, it, I know it's been um, a, a, quite a lot to take in, 